It was just after 10 a.m. And although this might seem like a little bit of a late start, I did actually shoot some photos this morning. I decided to leave the video clip behind just because it would have been a little, a little too much to do at once. And so I found this area that has this really interesting, almost white colored uh, cracked mud. And it reminds me of porcelain or like the shell of an egg or something along those lines. And it has all kinds of um, very interesting and unusual uh, shapes for the um, cracked mud. So went ahead and exposed uh, a few sheets of film on that, two different scenes. And I spent some time loading some film. And now I'm hiking through a canyon to a scene I found yesterday. See if I can get a composition on it. So I'm here about eh, 40 minutes or so ahead of the light. But a little bit of a scramble to get here, but not too bad. If I can get my camera set up, see if I can find a composition, and uh, just enjoy being in the shade. Film holders in weird. It wasn't loaded in right. So that is not a good shoot of film. So rather than wasting this one in terms of developing it, it's gonna toss it. The dark slide didn't go in right. So I knew something was up. Try this again. One second. F45. There we go. You should have a nice solid click when you put that uh, dark slide back in. So, We're much better. <laughs> what had happened on this one is it wasn't fully seated in the camera and uh, the door flipped open just a little bit so that when I tried to put the dark slide back in, it didn't go in all the way. So. It's easier just to toss that sheet of film than to accidentally spend 10 bucks on developing something I know is going to be crap. Saving money by burning money. But in case you're curious, this is what a sheet of Provia looks like. One side and the other side. So, 20 bucks.
right, so that is a sheet of Portra 160. And before that, I did a sheet of uh, Provia 100F. And actually, the wind is starting right now, so it was nice that it was very calm when I made those exposures. Um, but it was a very tricky scene. Uh, we have this precipice that drops off, and this is when I had to climb up to get here. And then there was this really nice, just golden wall of reflected light back there. So very, very beautiful. And there's no way I can get both the foreground and the background in focus. Um, just my depth of field is so narrow. And the most important part is the wall in the background. And I use just a hair front tilt to get both the background wall plus some of the rocks and boulders and stuff down at the base. And that helps a little bit with the foreground, but I'm not expecting the foreground to be sharp. Um, but this definitely falls in the just kind of having fun and trying to put compositions on scene sort of photo. It's not necessarily one I think is going to be a tremendous image, but you know, you got beautiful light, you have some interesting terrain in this canyon, so it'll be interesting to see how it works. But I've exposed a fair amount of film today, so I'm gonna get things packed up, head back to my truck, and there's another canyon which is um, just a little ways down the road from here, and I think I might be able to get back up into that one as well. And so I'll leave the kit behind in my truck. I'll just grab my lightweight scouting pack and go see if I can find any subjects of interest there for the days to come. But it's an absolutely beautiful day in Death Valley. I know what some of you guys are thinking that I just left the camera back there so I have to go get back and get the camera but in this case I legitimately can't take that in this so it's actually easier going back up and doing this twice so here we go time to go get the camera So as it turns out, this canyon is absolutely beautiful. It's just soaked in reflected light and it's a very long glow. It's gonna last for hours and hours and hours. And the rocks, there's a mixture of green rocks, some pink rocks, some uh, tan colored rocks. And the canyon just winds around and the light bounces all through it. And just wandering through here, I've already found probably four possible compositions. So this canyon can keep me busy for several days. Now, here's the hard part. Getting in here requires some serious scrambling, and that's gonna be very difficult with an eight by 10. But I know even if I have to take my kit apart and uh, bring it a little bit at a time over each obstacle, it's totally worth it. I can keep wandering and uh, keep scouting, but this is absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. One of the most beautiful canyons I've been in in a very long time.
Well, it is now about 345, and I came over to the area where I was this morning, where I photographed uh, two scenes in the same area. And as I was wandering around during the blue hour, I saw that this area back here looked quite interesting in the blue hour light. It's a very simplified, uh, no crazy light, just a very subdued light. And there's enough texture in this scene already. And so I set up a simple composition with my uh, 240 millimeter lens, which is equivalent to a slightly wider than normal focal length. And just showing a horizontal band of this uh, dried, cracked mud stream set against the larger area of mud. Um, so it's going to wait about an hour or so until the sun drops back behind the peaks and then do a, a blue hour exposure of it. But I do want to talk about that canyon I explored earlier today. And as I drove away from that area, I was just filled with this, this profound, optimistic warmth is the best way of describing it. And it was just so amazing to uh, just scramble over the boulders and see everything illuminated by the really just amazing, warm, reflected light and knowing that there's so much potential in that canyon. So I'm really looking forward to heading there tomorrow and uh, bringing a lot of film with me. I know it's going to be a challenge getting my pack back in there because uh, there's a lot of scrambling. Uh, but I think I can, uh, well, I have basically these two cases here. Um, the small one, I keep my lenses and meter and everything in. Big ones for the camera and film holders. But I can just pull those out of the case, kind of put them up top, and then uh, reassemble my pack as I go. So I think it'll not be a big deal. And right now there's just blue skies, no clouds, no wind, super calm. So looking forward to, in about an hour, exposing some film here and then uh, enjoying a nice, calm evening back at camp. So it's been a pretty awesome day so far. Alright, so that is the first exposure. It's not too long after sunset, uh, so it's not really blue hour yet, but I figured I'd do one in this sort of light. And I'll wait a little bit until uh, there is a stronger glow over there on the western horizon. Eastern sky goes a little bit dark, so I have a little bit more directionality to the light. And I'll do another exposure then. Uh, and by then the exposure will probably be, I don't know, 30 seconds, a minute, somewhere in that range. But it's absolutely calm right now, which is fantastic. And uh, sure feels great to expose a lot of film today. Well, that worked out pretty much as I had hoped it would. Um, I did expose two sheets of Provia 100. Uh, the first was just after the sun dropped back behind the peaks, and then I just finished doing the second sheet. The second sheet was a 50 second long exposure. And there's a nice soft low angle light there now. And the wind's been calm, the skies are blue. And so it feels great to expose a little bit more film today. Uh, but now I'm going to get the camera packed up, head back to camp, get some dinner. I probably also should load a little bit more film tonight just to make sure I have enough ready to go for tomorrow. Because I'm really looking forward to heading back to that canyon and see if I can find some nice compositions there and uh, work with a really nice reflected light in that canyon. So feels pretty good to point my camera at a bunch of stuff today, expose some film, but now it's time for dinner. Although I shot a lot of film that day, I'm only really satisfied with one of the images, but it wasn't the scene with the rocks and the narrow canyon. Despite it being an interesting subject, I just don't connect with it as much as I thought I would. In the second photo, well, that was more of an experiment than anything else. The space below the central boulder feels a bit awkward to me. The third photo is technically fine, but perhaps I'm only comparing it to the final image, the one taken of the beautifully cracked white mud just before sunrise. 
I love the simplicity of this scene and how the cracked mud looks so dimensional in the early morning light. At first glance, it might be mistaken for a black and white image, but the subtle color gives it added depth. Thanks as always for watching, and we'll see you around next time. If you enjoy this ad-free and clickbait-free content and want to help me live my dream, a voluntary contribution of just $24 a year helps keep my gas tank full and my film freezer stocked. For more information on how to support me and my work, please visit the donation section of my website at benhorn.com slash donate. I also have prints in my portfolio box set available on my website. You can find a direct link down below in the show notes. Thanks in advance for your support.